Hey guys, so it's uh, Tuesday, July 10th, and our other you that's pregnant is looking like she's getting close. She has bagged up considerably, so her udder has really gotten full, and also she's looking really swollen in the back, and today she looks very sunken in. And so those are all signs of early lambing, and I'm really thinking that in the next 24 to 48 hours, maybe even sooner, we'll see some lambs uh, drop on the ground. All right, so Jackie and I uh, went to the internet yesterday to try to find out like what is going on with this lamb. So we have a lamb, she's about four months old now. And we were wondering why she looked like she was in pain. Matter of fact, didn't you say that she looked like she had like- She looked like she was giving birth. Yeah, so like- Like uh, her perineum area was protruding. And so I was like, what is going on with you? And then I grabbed her and checked her out and I told Frank, I was like, I know this sounds weird, but I think she's pooping out of her vagina. It sounds gross, but we did some research and we found out that, you know, just like my, my learning in school, becoming a PA, you know, unfortunately women can have this same sort of thing where literally the place where, you know, the, the business happens with the number two can not grow out of the area in which a woman's, you know, little bitty parts are from. So oh there is God. a... Are you talking to two-year-olds? <laughs> and so... We can say butthole and vagina. Okay, fine. So what she said, because I'm grossed out by that. Uh, but anyway, what happens is that the two of them don't become separate pathways. And what is going on is her... The fecal material, of course, is coming out of where it should be, and it's unfortunately has nowhere else to exit except through her vagina. And so uh, we saw some, we actually went further on with that. We saw some surgeries. They're able to repair it. And so, unfortunately, this little girl will never be able to become a mom because, of course, nobody should ever subject her to that, um, especially if nothing is, you know, made the way that it's supposed to be. So we're going to take her back to the gal that we bought her from. Uh, this is totally a rare thing, but we wanted to make sure that you are at least aware of it by watching this video, that if you decide to have livestock one day, if you have a homestead, you got to check to make sure that all... I'm going to leave her alone. Um for another hour come back and check her in an hour uh, with heritage breeds though you really um have to check often because they're so excellent at laboring on their own especially sheep um, commercial sheep have a really difficult lambing a lot of them but um these jacob sheep they're really amazing at just doing it all on their own um, in fact i've only caught out of I think we've had like six to eight uh, lambings. I've only caught one of them. And I watch them like a hawk. And it seems like the moment that I step away for a minute is when they decide to actually <laughs> lamb completely on their own. They never need intervention. Skidoo. Hey, Skidoo. Are you going to have a couple of babies yet or what? Or are we just going to pant? Look at the little lamb over on the side, by the way. Little ram lamb. He is so perky and doing great. All right, I'll let you guys lay back down again. Sheep watch, part two, part deux. Hopefully we'll have some lambs here in a little bit. And this is her right here. You can see how she looks super skinny. <laughs> um, she didn't look like that yesterday and it looks like her, her babies have dropped and are getting into position. Her udder has, if I can get a shot of it, I don't want to bother her, but has really filled up as well. And she just looks uncomfortable, kind of up and down, up and down. Whoa. <laughs> We've turned these girls out. Well, actually, girls and the new ram, Freedom. Turn them out on a new piece of pasture. Uh, unfortunately, they will be out here short-lived because when we get the goat bucks, these guys will be out here with 
this new pasture. This new pasture leads up to what we keep going back and forth with on turning it into a rental for a bed and breakfast. This cabin dates back to the 1890s and we would love to do something you know with it uh, but we need your help so comment below what you would be excited about there's a zip lining tour that's like world class right down the road not even a half a mile away and uh, we're super interested in hearing what you have to say about what we should do with this cabin Next, I give the babies just a little bit, like probably about a fourth of a cup each. And what it does, it just keeps them kind of entertained eating while I am milking her mommy, actually. All right, baby, get back in. The next thing is I grab her food. And so you want to average about a cup of grain for every cup of milk that she gives you. And so I have my own mixed feed in here that I have. Um, I give her a really high protein goat feed with some beet pulp and some sunflower seeds. So I'm just trying to, I just washed her teeth. So I'm just drying them really good. You don't want it to be wet. And then um, I spray off a couple squirts just to clean out the teat cavity of any bacteria or any kind of milk plug from the night. Now I milk with three fingers. I always have even on my milk cow. Um, a lot of people milk with five, but for some reason my hands just work better like this. I think because I'm squeezing it uh, with my thumb really well. But you want to trap the milk high with your thumb and your uh, pink pointer and then it just it squeezes out so easy if you do that. So I actually use the palm of my hand to squeeze with and then my three fingers. But if you can use all five fingers and these ones just kind of help squeeze, you can do that too. So this is just a homemade teat spray with um, melaleuca and lavender um, and I just kind of rub it on her teats after I'm done just to keep them clean but the baby ends up sucking them off anyway so. Here's Jackie's battle board with uh, Molly's herbals on it and then this is how you can track when you've naturally wormed them. It's actually super handy I mean homesteading tip make sure that you post this kind of stuff around with as many animals as you have you're gonna forget and so we put these little boards everywhere reminders things of that nature that way we can definitely keep track of all of our little ones see what we got going on in here so one of our gals who didn't want to take the babies Still just wanted to sit on some eggs. And so we've gone ahead and gave in to that. And we've allowed her to hang out by herself. And underneath her, she does not have, this is a bared rock. And she does actually not have any 
eggs of her own underneath here, Jackie went out and got something called hatching eggs. Hatching eggs are eggs that are have known to be fertilized and they're good for usually up to like three weeks if they sit on a shelf before the incubation process starts. And so we weren't able to get her to become a mom to the live chicks, but we put these down in a nice little nest for her, let her feel secure and safe, and she has absolutely taken to the hatching eggs. And so fast forward, you know, 25, 28 days from now, and hopefully we will have a bunch of Swedish flower chicks. That's actually what's underneath her. Um, Swedish flowers are like this kaleidoscope of different colors, and they give these really pretty cream to almost white eggs. And so we are ready for you to be a mom, and we will let you be, and you just protect that nest girl. And <laughs>